All right, so in this video, we are going to discuss a problem, a very typical problem on um, uh, applying Newton's second law uh, when you have an object that's rolling without slipping. So the problem says that you've got a solid sphere of mass m and radius r that is rolling down an incline of angle theta. You have to calculate the acceleration of its center of mass and the magnitude and direction of the friction, act, friction force acting on the sphere. All right, so let's just try to draw a diagram. So here is our inclined plane. And here is the sphere. All right, now it's rolling down the incline. Okay. So let's um, identify all the forces acting on it. So one force clearly is the force of gravity. What other forces are acting on it? There is a normal force. The normal force acts like this. What other force is acting on it? There has to be a friction force. Now, in this case, the it's it might not be immediately obvious to you what direction the friction force is. And that's fine, because in the video for chapter 10, I mentioned that it's fine if you don't know the direction of the friction force, uh, you can just arbitrarily choose a direction and the math in the end will tell you whether your choice was correct or not. However, in this particular example, it's not too hard to figure out the direction of the friction force. And I'll just show you how you can figure it out, though it's not, uh, it's, it's absolutely fine if you don't do this. So the ball is rolling down the incline, right? Uh, so it would be speeding as it rolls down, it would speed up. As you know from experience, if you just roll a ball down an incline, it would speed up. And if it speeds up, that means its angular velocity in the clockwise direction, in the counterclockwise direction, uh, would be speeding up. So the ball is rolling in the counterclockwise direction. In, and if it speeds up, then the, uh, the omega in the counterclockwise direction would, would increase. And so, if omega is increasing in the counterclockwise direction, there must be an ex acceleration, angular acceleration alpha, which is making the omega increase. And so what direction is alpha? Alpha has to be in the counterclockwise direction. Now, remember that torque is equal to, net torque is equal to I alpha. So the only torque here uh, that's acting on the ball about its center is the, is the one due to friction. So that tells you that friction has to be in this direction because that is the only way it can exert a counterclockwise torque. So the logic here was that we figured out alpha is in the counterclockwise direction because omega is increasing in the counterclockwise direction. So the only torque that's causing alpha is friction so we need friction to exert a counterclockwise torque. And so the only way that friction can exert a counterclockwise torque is if it acts up the incline. And that is how I know that friction is exerting a count, uh, friction must be pointed upwards. But if you had not gone through this bit of reasoning and if you had just guessed that friction is upwards, that would have been absolutely fine. If you made a guess that friction is in the wrong direction, uh, downwards, that would also be fine because the math would just set you right in the end. Okay, so uh, since we've already figured out the direction of friction, let's just go ahead and use that. So these are our forces. We've identified the three forces acting on the sphere, mg, fn, and uh, f. Okay, as usual, let's just break up the mg into two components as we've done many times before. So mg would be would have one component like this and another component like that. Um, you know that this component would be mg cosine theta and this one would be mg sine theta. All right, so now let's try applying Newton's second law in the form F net equals mass times acceleration. Uh, and we are going to do that uh, in a direction parallel to the incline and also in the direction perpendicular to the incline. 
So in the direction parallel to the incline, oh, we also need to choose a sign convention. Since the ball is moving down the incline, it makes sense to just take our sign convention, choose the sign convention that down the incline is positive. And if the ball is rolling down the incline, uh, what direction does it spin? It spins in the counterclockwise direction. So we are also going to choose counterclockwise to be the positive direction for angular quantities. So these are our sign conventions. Okay, and then we're going to use the apply these two equations. All right, so let's start with F net equals mass times acceleration. So what is the equation that I get from F net equals MA uh, in the direction parallel to the incline? Well, it's going to be mg sine theta minus F, the friction force, is equal to mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. Okay, I'm going to call the acceleration of the center of mass as A, and let me just, just to be absolutely clear, A is defined as the acceleration of the center of mass of the ball. All right. So that's one equation, and clearly we've got two unknowns, F and A, so we can't really solve for either of these from this equation. We need one more equation. That one is going to come from net torque equals I alpha. All right. So let's think about, there are three forces here, mg, fn, and little f. Uh, let's see what forces they're applying about the center. The ball is rotating about its center, about an axis passing through its center. So let's see what these forces, what torques these forces are applying about the center. Now here is the, let me just draw a separate diagram for that. Here is the ball. mg is acting straight down. Is it exerting any torque about the center? The answer is no, because in order to find the torque, you do force multiplied by the lever arm of the force. If the force passes through your reference point, then obviously its lever arm is zero, so it does not exert any torque. So in general, any force which passes through uh, the point of reference does not have any torque about that particular point of reference. Right? Same can be said about Fn. Fn is acting like this. So mg and fn don't have don't exert any torque at all. Right? The only force that exerts a torque is little f, the friction. So let's see what the torque due to friction is going to be. So friction is acting like this, tangent to the circle. So what is the lever arm of the friction? about the center of the sphere. So recall from uh, chapter 10 how you calculate the uh, lever arm. So you draw a line through the force and make a perpendicular from the reference point down to that line. And that line is your lever arm. So the lever arm here is nothing but the radius. All right. So let's call the radius, yeah, the radius is, is capital R. So the torque is going to be force multiplied by lever arm, so F times R. And is it a clockwise torque or a counterclockwise torque? So if you look at the way the force is acting on the sphere, in my diagram at the bottom corner here, uh, clearly this force is trying to rotate the sphere in the counterclockwise direction. So this is a counterclockwise torque, and counterclockwise torque should be given a positive sign. So we have... Uh, yeah, so there's only one torque, F times R. The other forces don't have any torques. And uh, it's counterclockwise, so we give it a positive sign, is equal to I alpha. So uh, we know what the I for a sphere is. It's a solid sphere, so I is going to be uh, 2 fifths MR square. Uh, I think I'm using the wrong M, so I'll just switch these all to capital M's. I don't need to do that, I've got a fantastic eraser here. All right, so 
All right, so this is what we get uh, times alpha. What do I do about alpha? Now, if it's rolling without slipping, we know what that implies. We know that the velocity of the center of mass, which I'm just calling V, uh, I'll just write VCM, is equal to R omega, right? So if you take a derivative of this equation, then the derivative of V would give you the acceleration of the center of mass. R is a constant, and the derivative of omega is just alpha, the angular acceleration. So ACM is equal to R times alpha. So whenever something is rolling without slipping, you get these two equations for free. VCM equals R omega, and ACM equals R alpha. So we can plug those into our torque equation, and that gives us FR is equal to 2 fifths MR squared, for alpha, you can write ACM, which is A, divided by R, okay, and you can just cancel out all the R's, and you get F is equal to 2 fifths MA. All right, so we have two equations now. This is our equation number one, and this is our equation number two. All right, so now all we have to do is just solve these two equations. So our equation number one mg sine theta minus f is equal to ma, and equation 2 is this. So how do we solve these equations? You can just plug in the second equation into the first one. So mg sine theta minus, instead of f, I can write 2 fifths ma is equal to um, ma. So I plugged in the second equation into the first one. I'm just doing algebra at this point. So uh, then I have to solve for a, so mg sine theta, if you move it to the other side, 2 fifths plus 1 is, um, is uh, 7 fifths ma, the m cancels out, and so a is equal to 5 over 7 g sine theta. And that is the acceleration of the center of mass. Now this came out to be a positive quantity, so that means it's going to be uh, in our, our positive direction is down the incline. So it's going to accelerate down the incline uh, with this particular acceleration, a 5 seventh g sine theta, right? So, so we found the acceleration of the center of mass. We've already, okay, um, let's go ahead and solve for the friction, right? So the friction, is 2 fifths ma, so we can just use that equation to solve for friction. 2 over 5 ma, instead of a, I'm writing 5 sevenths g sine theta. Okay, so the friction turns out to be 2 over 7 mg sine theta. That's our friction force. Okay, now this came out to be positive, right? So since it came out to be positive, the math is telling us that we made the correct choice regarding the direction of friction. If you had done this problem with the incorrect choice for the direction of friction, you would have found, uh, you would have gotten negative sign. So that's what I meant when I, uh, when I said that it does not matter what direction you choose the friction force to be. Um, if you set up your equations correctly, the math will tell you in the end whether you made the correct choice for the direction of friction or not. If the friction turns out to be something negative, then you know that you made the wrong choice for the direction of friction. The magnitude will come out right. All you have to do is just flip, go back to your diagram if you want, and flip the direction of the friction arrow that you drew. Okay, so we have found uh, the both the magnitude and the direction of the friction. Okay, I'll just write this down. Since F came out to be positive, came out to be negative, uh, positive, I mean, our choice for the direction of friction was correct. So we found the acceleration we found both the magnitude and direction of the friction force. Okay, now I just want to make one more point here. Uh, early on in the course, we learned a formula for static friction, which is 
fs max is equal to mu s multiplied by fn now the friction that we have here does this formula mu s times fn apply to the friction force in this particular problem what do you think pause the video and see if you can come up with an answer the correct answer is no why because this is just static friction it's static friction because the two surfaces are not sliding against each other the ball is not slipping against the ground so it is static friction but we have no way of knowing whether this is the maximum force of static friction or not so it is it could be just static friction but not necessarily the maximum force of static friction so this formula mu s times fn does not necessarily apply uh, to the friction uh, that we have in this problem or problems like this so unless the problem specifically say, states that the friction force is the maximum force of static friction or uh, the ball is about to start slipping uh, you you cannot apply mu s times fn to find the friction force all right